What's up guys and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today I want to talk about what I would get if I had to completely start my studio over from scratch. This was brought into my mind because as you may have noticed, I am in the middle of rearranging my studio, aka my bedroom, and it got me thinking about if I had to start the entire studio over minus my laptop, which I'm going to assume I'm allowed to keep, what would I get? So I want to talk through that and hopefully you find this helpful for maybe informing some of your own purchases as you're trying to either get started in music production or go deeper into your music production journey, whether that be with hardware or with software. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to assume that I get to keep my computer. In this case, I'm rocking a super basic Dell Windows laptop. Nothing very fancy about it. It's adequate for most of my music production needs, most of my video editing needs for working from home and for a bit of light gaming. It's fine. So I'm going to assume that I'm keeping that. And from there, I'm going to separate this out into three levels or tiers of gear acquisition. So let's start with level one. The very first thing I would do is actually get a DAW. And at this point, my DAW of choice is definitely Reaper. It's 60 bucks for a personal or small business license, which is incredibly affordable. It's developed by an indie developer. It's cross-platform. It's got a lot of stuff going for it, and it's got everything I need for mixing and sequencing built in. I would definitely want to get some synth plugins to go with it, so in that case, I would probably get Serum because I know it incredibly well and can get a lot out of it, but there's also the free plugin Vital, which released recently, and I would definitely like to give that a go at some point on this channel once I have time. That might be a viable alternative for me. To get my hands on even more sounds, I would probably get my hands on a Splice Sounds subscription, and I would use my own $5 sample pack. Link in the description. It's a ton of drum and synth one-shots that I made with producers like me in mind. It's the kind of thing that I would and do use. So if you want to hit that up, that's available at the link in the description. But shameless self-promotion aside, let's actually get into hardware because I would definitely want to get into hardware within tier one. And for me personally, getting my first piece of gear in level one would have to be something that's self-contained, something that's hands-on, and preferably something somewhat portable. And longtime viewers of the channel might be surprised, although I did kind of spoil it here, that my pick would actually be the Roland MC-101. I have been and continue to be a hardcore Novation Circuit fanboy, and I am well aware of all the rumors circulating right now, and I'm very excited to see where that goes, but we don't have details on that yet, so I'm just going to leave those out of the discussion for now. The main reason I'm picking the 101 over the circuit as my kind of overall level one hardware device is its USB audio functionality. Essentially, you just plug this into your computer via USB, and it can record the four individual tracks. And this allows me to get all of the benefits of the hands-on portable hardware workflow and all the benefits of in-depth tweaking and mixing in a DAW. So I can make something on this just while going about my life and then mix it in my DAW so it sounds completely indistinguishable from something actually just made in a DAW. It can get incredibly polished. Plus, this has incredibly polished sound anyway, and it deals with samples really well, and it has some really unique features like the random patches that just make this overall a really fantastic device. I've really fallen in love with this thing, and of course, it's incredibly small and incredibly portable without sacrificing too much of a tactile workflow. It's still fairly intuitive once you get over the learning curve. And finally, for tier one, I would probably get this uh, cheap pair of Panasonic earbuds. This is probably considered considered blasphemy by some people, but let me explain. I know these things incredibly well. I've used these models of Panasonic earbuds ever since I was a young teenager. I'm now 23, so I know how these things sound inside and out. Plus, it can plug into my synths, it can plug into my phone, because I still have a headphone jack, it can plug into my computer. It's just very convenient. They're cheap, so I can just roll them up and stick them in my pocket and not worry too much about wear and tear. Um, this would be my starting point, although I would upgrade in tier two to a proper pair of headphones for monitoring as quickly as possible. So that being said, let's move on to level two. Let's start off with the headphones. These are a pair of Audio-Technica headphones. These are the M40s, the cousin of the ubiquitous M50s. They've got a pretty good frequency response. They reproduce bass and high frequencies quite well with a good amount of detail. They're not entirely flat, but they're flat enough. This has got a pretty good cost to quality ratio and is what I've been using for some proper monitoring, and I have no complaints. The major thing that I would want to address in level two is some form of dedicated hands-on sound design. In other words, a dedicated synth. And for that, I would get the Arturia 
Micro Freak. I've got a full in-depth review of this coming soon, but in the meantime, let me just say this thing is incredibly versatile because of its oscillators and filters. This thing is incredibly powerful because of its mod matrix and all the ways that it can do modulation. It's got some unique aspects to it. It can sound very pretty and very chaotic. This is kind of the perfect synth for me. And once again, I'm going to cover this much more in depth in a dedicated video in the future, but for now, let me just say this is definitely going to be my go to for a dedicated synth. It has a whole lot of stuff that I want all packed into one device. And finally, to allow all that stuff to kind of talk to each other and to the computer, I would get an audio interface. This is the Evo 4. I got it super recently and I don't have strong opinions on it yet, but it's got very clean sounding inputs. It's incredibly small and compact and pretty inexpensive. And so far, I'm pretty impressed with it. So I would tentatively recommend it. And regardless, I would get some sort of audio interface and just go from there. Moving on to tier three and the approach here is somewhat different. Rather than just choosing really well-defined pieces of gear, this is left more open. And the purpose of tier three is to allow myself to get more specific stuff to fill very specific voids in my workflow or sound palette. For instance, if I wanted to do more drum stuff from scratch on a hardware drum synth or drum machine, I would probably get the model cycles. If I wanted some dedicated analog synthesis at a low cost and very compact bulk of keys for me. And if I wanted to upgrade my main groove box, if I wanted to get more into performance, I would probably get a circuit. If I wanted to get more into sound design on a groove box and embrace a more lo-fi feel, I would probably get an Electribe. And if I wanted to really go all out, eventually I would probably get a Machine Plus. I've really been enjoying it. And right now I'm not planning on buying it, but as I mentioned in my previous video, I am sorely tempted. Or maybe I might take some of the stuff I like about it and translate it to the computer to get the best of both worlds, like maybe get a Machine Micro Mark III. That's something I've been considering, and that would be a good way to kind of flesh out my studio. Regardless, that's building off of a really firm foundation and getting into more niche and more specific stuff, as well as giving myself more stuff to make videos about. Speaking of making videos, I do want to briefly mention what I would get if I were to start my YouTube studio from scratch, because at this point, that is very important to me. At the beginning, I wouldn't let gear stop me. I would just make videos on my phone and I would prioritize upgrading audio as quickly as possible. This is a USB Sure mic. I believe it's the M7 off the top of my head. It's pretty good. From there, I would upgrade my camera. I'm rocking the Sony RX100 Mark III, which is incredibly small and high quality, but also very lightweight, so I can suspend it from a mic stand for proper overhead shots. And finally, for software, I would do what I do now, which is use free stuff. DaVinci Resolve is absolutely fantastic for video editing, and Photopea.com, or possibly Photopea, is basically a Photoshop clone that has been my go-to for making thumbnails and album artwork for quite a while now. And that is how I would approach rebuilding my studio setup from the ground up. If you've got a different approach, be sure to leave it in the comments below. And if you'd like to check out more related videos, you can click or tap the links on the screen. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.